All right, here we go. Here's your tutorial on stormwater management. Uh, so let's go through your assignment here. So first off, here's your intro. Uh, should have talked a little bit in class about um, why stormwater is important in terms of managing it pre-development compared to post-development. And then we start talking a little bit about low impact development techniques, uh, how to address stormwater, both the quantity of it. So how much is uh, flowing to your rivers and streams, uh, as well as the quality and making sure we're limiting uh, pollutants going to these uh, said rivers and streams. Um, one thing that we need to recover is using this rational method to calculate pre-development and post-development runoff. So uh, this equation right here shows us Q, which is the peak runoff rate in cubic feet per second. Uh, Cf is running through the runoff coefficient adjustment factor. I'll show you where to get that value shortly. Uh, also, we have C, the runoff coefficient. That's talking about the actual material. Uh, that the stormwater would be running on. Um, and then the I here is your rainfall intensity uh, measured in inches per hour. That will be given in the map. So depending on where you're building, uh, that value will change. And then finally, you have A, which is the area um, measured in acres. Okay, so that's going to be a conversion that we'll have to do uh, depending on how you have things measured. Okay. Uh, the first portion here is just looking at the code. So the uh, in particular, we're building here in Noblesville, and so we'll be using the Stormwater Technical Standards Manual uh, that's linked there. So when you click on this, uh, it should open up a new tab, and we'll show you, uh, generally speaking, uh, covers a bunch of things in, re in regards to uh, stormwater, specifically in Section 400, it looks like. Um, sorry, I'll take that back. In, in Section 200, hydrology. All right, uh, so this first part is really just doing some research. Um, so I already listed off the section numbers there. So most of this can be in section 201 for those first three questions, section 302 for the next few. Okay, and then finally for the calculations, uh, this is just showing that we can use the rational method, which is that equation I just showed you. And uh, the one thing we will need to get from the code is this uh, rainfall intensity, that's a uh, hundred year storm, a uh, hundred year, one hour storm. Okay, so if we come back over to our standards manual, I'm going to try to find that table, table 302, uh, should be a map here. And went too far, scroll back up here, 302, must have missed it, hold on. Okay, 302, and in particular, we want to find 100 year storm. So I'm having trouble finding that table right now. Uh, let me pause it. Okay, sorry about that. We're actually in table 201. Uh, I was in the wrong section there. So, table 201 is where you should be looking. You've got this rainfall intensity chart. And so coming down here, we're looking for a one hour, uh, 100 year storm. So we see it right here, it's gonna be 3.03. So I'm gonna go ahead and jot that down here, 3.03. And again, this is measured in inches per hour. So it's inches per hour. Uh, might make note of this here, this is section 201. All right. Okay, so now that we have that piece of information, I'm going to come down to the actual calculations. Okay, so first off, um, we're told we're going to use a 100-year, one-hour storm that we just found uh, using average runoff coefficients for pre-development uh, and use average runoff coefficient for post-development. Coefficients can be found on the last page of the assignment. So if we look at the very end here, right, we see we've got some um, rational method runoff coefficients for different materials, as well as down here, the adjustment factor. Oops. That's down. All right, so first off, uh, pre-development, this should be just the site. So I'm gonna jot down the first one, 3.03, uh, the runoff adjustment factor for 100 year, one hour storm, 100 year storm. The runoff coefficient adjustment factor is right here, 1.5. So that's what I'll put down in there. 1.25, okay. and then now the C for the site. So, uh, the site itself, if I come back here, we're told that the pre-existing condition of the site was 
Drift Meadow. Okay, so if I come back to my table at the bottom, I look for Drift Meadow, which I am having a hard time seeing right here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think we might need to get that piece of information from the table. Okay, so give me one second here. Okay, so sorry, the table should be from the um, Noblesville Standard Manual. So if we come back over here, this is in section two, still in 201, runoff coefficients. So we're going to use this Earth Meadow one, which is 0.25. Okay, so for the site itself, uh, coefficient of 0.25 and the area of the site, you can actually look in your Revit document for this, um, but I'm going to already have it jotted down. So that was 6.67 acres. All right. So in total, your pre-development site, um, we're going to figure out your total values. So this is going to be using this equation, Q equals CF times C times uh, so I'm going to show my work down here. So this means the coefficient was 1.25 times the C is 0.25 times rainfall intensity P0.03. And that all multiplied by the area in acres 0.67. And so if I put that all through my calculator, I should find a total of, um, I've got on mine here, 6.3 approximately. So just type that into your calculator. So let me just double check that real quick. 1.25 times 0.25 times 3.03 times 6.67. Yeah, 6.32 officially. So I'll go ahead and look for that. Okay, so 6.32 um, should be my runoff rate. And this is in the cubic feet or per second. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, so that's well, so I'll type in there 6.32 feet cubed per second. All right. Uh, so that's your pre development. In Total. Um, so since there was only that one, that's going to be my answer for the entire pre-development site. Okay. After that, um, in post-development, you would do kind of the same thing. The rainfall intensity is going to be the same since we're in that same spot. We're going to use that same runoff coefficient. And the main difference here is in post-development, this is really dependent on how big you made your different parts of your site, right? So for example, um, if I was dealing with the roof for uh, the parking lot. Okay, so the parking, um, the first thing I would look at is I'm probably using asphalt, right? And I'm going to use the average value here. So uh, if I use the average, let me go ahead and pull up my calculator so you guys can see it. So the average of asphalt would be 0.7 plus 0 0.95. If I'll divide it by two, uh, that's not right. Do this one more time, sorry. Okay, so 0.7 plus 0.95, that equals one divided by two. The so 0.825 is the value I would use for the runoff coefficient for the parking lot. Um, the area of the parking lot, now that's dependent on what you did in Revit. So uh, figure out the total area. Uh, when you when you click on it, an item in Revit, it should have the total square footage. And then once you find the square footage, just put it in acres. Uh, you'll have to divide that number by 43,560, as you see there. Okay, so that's what you get as the area of the parking lot. For each of those, you figure out what the post development value is. So again, using this equation, uh, rational method equation, you'll figure out total cubic feet per second. Uh, and then you'll figure out your total post development and then um, subtract that uh, from the pre-development and that'll be your total change in cubic feet per second. Okay, all right, so that's gonna be how you set that up. Um, these last few questions, estimating the uh, volume, that's where we use that 20% rule of thumb. So whatever you found in regards to the total um, acres, so in our case, the total acres 
was 6.67. So it'd just be 0.2 times 6.67. Uh, so here you should find the total volume of your uh, retention pond should be 1.33 acre feet. And then uh, using that, you can figure out the total area. So assuming that the depth of the pond is four feet, uh, then you're just using basic area equations uh, to figure out the total square footage. So for example, um, if we were gonna do a round pond, right? then I would take the area that we just defined the total area of the pond, I'll take the volume of that pond, which was 1.33, divided by the depth, which was four feet. And then I'm going to turn acres into square feet. So that's going to be multiplied by 43,560 square feet. And that gives me a total area of 14,484 square feet. And then to figure out the for example, radius of the pond, if I was gonna do a circular pond. So let's say if I did a circular retention pond, then I would use area equals pi times r squared. And then using this area, I solve for r squared. Okay, or solve for r, I should say. All right, and that's how you can kind of set that up. Uh, the rest of these questions, can kind of look over the uh, presentations to answer. So I think I should get you guys on, but that's how to set up some of those calculations.